Hi everyone, this is Doug and I just wanted to share my latest fascination with you. So it's this amazing website that's been put together apparently by someone called Robin Hawks and I'm just fascinated with this and so I'm looking at it all the time. So what it's doing is it's showing you some of the big wind farms and it's showing you the prominent ones about which they've got data in the UK. So if there's any in Ireland then they're not included. You can see little dots, these ones are they're sort of they're there and it shows you some limited information about them but it's the ones with the big circles that they're providing you with the information on yeah and it's just really well presented because look you can see how at the moment when i'm recording this there's a good wind going down into denmark they've got loads of these wind farms in denmark of course so they're doing very well at the moment and a lot of the uk wind farms are here in the north sea the wind isn't going here at the moment and i really like this because it, it just shows how even when it's not very windy in one part of the UK, often there's a bit of wind somewhere else. So if we had more of these wind farms spread around, that would be really useful. And so that's just one thing. You can play around, you can click on them, and it shows you how they're performing compared to their total capacity. So this one's doing 13%. This one, it, it's going to be massive. It, they haven't even started building it yet, but it's got onto the map because I think there's something connected, even though the rest of it's not being built. So, I mean, when this one is live, it's further out in the North Sea. It's absolutely huge. It's going to power, you know, huge amounts. And there's there's others as well that have been built in the future that are going to be huge. But I was looking at these ones because at the moment, there's a bit of wind coming in, isn't there, off Holland there. So the North Sea, Scotland, which is where most of our wind farms are, low wind there. It's not doing much. We've got one down here on, on the channel. Sometimes that's windy when the rest of the country isn't at the moment. Very, very low winds around there. But we've got this windy area here. And this wind farm is performing really well. It's 79% uh, now. It was 80% 80, 80 when I looked a minute ago. And so that's actually getting quite close to its capacity. And you can see the total here earlier on today. It was at its capacity. It dropped a bit. The wind dropped and then it's come up a little bit since then. But yeah, really interesting that this one is doing so much better than these other ones. And I looked up, this is a much newer one. So it's got bigger turbines and they do better in lower wind speeds. So each new wind farm that's being built is performing better than the previous ones. I thought I'd record this because I looked at these two right next to each other. So Greater Gabbard, that's doing all right. It's, you know, obviously compared to its capacity, it's down at 31%, but it's producing some power for the country. And then you look at the one next door, Galloper, it's, it's, it's literally like they're next to each other, these two. And this one is sort of maybe six years newer than its neighbor. And look at the difference there. This one is getting 31% of its capacity. This one is getting 75% of its capacity. And that's not even the latest wind turbines or anything like that. These things have just got so much better. And so when people are sort of criticizing wind power, they're probably criticizing the, you know, the turbines from 20 years ago or something like that. These new ones are absolutely fantastic. So yeah, this... This is absolutely the future for us. And what I've learned by looking at this map is if we spread them round more, instead of having them all in, in Scotland and the North Sea, often when it's low wind, you know, you get these sort of lulls around which the wind's blowing. There will be wind somewhere in the UK. And luckily we can connect to Denmark as well, you know, and, and Norway and all these other places. So when it's not windy in Britain, we can get power from other places, but actually it very often is windy somewhere on our windy aisles that we've got here. So we are absolutely perfect for wind power. And yeah, it'll be great when we start to get more on the land as well. Look, it's it's sort of green. Green, you know, it's, it's green is all right. You can get some power out of green. Blue, very hard to get the power from when it's very low wind, obviously. Yeah, I just wanted to show this. I thought it was... Um, quite indicative of the way that the technology has come along, quite indicative of the fact that it's a good idea to spread these things around and build some in the West Country, in Wales, in the South of England, alongside solar. 
it just makes a lot of sense and we need to really get on with these things so those are my thoughts for today and uh yeah do share your reactions in the comments on this one